Hey guys, how's it going? Modern Musket here. Got this Raptor Tactical sort of setup. Uh, Want to do a video on it and give my thoughts. So what I got here is the Ghost Mark II plate carrier. As you can see, a Multicam Alpine by Raptor Tactical. Got their Ghost Elastic Cummerbund, as well as this little adapter set. Uh, you can get these individually, but I didn't know that at the time because I was just getting into tactical gear and I bought these as $15. Looking back on it, I could have gotten a lot, lot better deal elsewhere, but I got those on there. And also I've got shoulder straps from Raptor Tactical. These are the only ones that they offer, at least as far as I know of. And I will go over that in this video as well. Uh, this is just a hand warmer I got from Condition Gray. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. So, got this plate carrier a couple years ago. I think it's my second or third ever plate carrier. Uh, at this point, I'm somewhere around 14 or 15. And now that I know what to look for in plate carriers, sort of their features, what comes pretty standard, I would argue nowadays, uh, I think I'm qualified to talk about this plate carrier and give my criticisms on it. And sadly, there are a lot of criticisms. So if you're looking at a ghost plate carrier or any, any sort of Raptor tactical plate carrier, um, I would strongly recommend watching till the end of this video because I do have some points I would like to make. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, well, <laughs> with this plate carrier, my biggest form of contention is with the cummerbund, honestly. So I have an elastic cummerbund on here. It is designed for three 5.56 Stanag GI style magazines in each side of the cummerbund, so six cells in total. Uh, for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna take the cummerbund out and that will allow me to gripe about it some more. But <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and take this out. And I do apologize, y'all are probably gonna hear a lot of elastic, not elastic, I'm sorry, uh, Velcro in this video, but you sit here and fight this for a second and uh yeah you're uh you're not here in velcro right now which is one of my complaints um this cummerbund just floats inside the rear plate bag so it doesn't mount inside it just floats in there which isn't what you want so once you have the front flaps for the cummerbund on your front of your plate bag this back here would be resting in your rear and it will just slide in and out. If you pitch to the right or left as you're leaning, uh, leaning over, picking something up, just doing any sort of drill, that's what you're gonna have to contend with. And it's not very conducive to a rigid platform. So that's a big X in my book. And also there's no Velcro on the inside of the plate bag. It is literally a hollow cavity where no matter what type of cummerbund you put in there, it just it just moves around. There, there's no way to mount it to the pocket that was designed for cummerbunds. And if you're saying just use a cry setup, you can. For instance, I have some cry uh, cummerbunds right here. And what you're supposed to do is put three sixteen inch shock tube inside of these little channels here. And you could mount it to each other, but then you're gonna have the exact same issue that you have with this elastic cummerbund, is that this will be attached to one another, right? But you're gonna have your flaps mounted to your front plate bag, but this is just gonna move around in the rear plate bag, because it's not mounted to anything. There's no molly to interface it with on the interior of the bag. So at that point, you may as well just go with like a JPC or a Slickster. I mean, with all those plate carriers, you get the same functionality as you do with this one and with this one it didn't come ready to go out of the box I still had to retrofit it so there's not really a pro in that sense so that's my biggest problem with the cummerbund with this one in particular and, and that's just strictly design that's a poor design if they ever come out with a mark three that's that is the biggest thing they need to fix uh, with this cummerbund in particular like I said, it's designed for 5.56 magazines. I've got four here to show you. Sadly, I don't have a mag pool. I know, heresy. Um, but I have an amend two magazine. 
It is a polymer style. For those who aren't aware, polymer actually it has a little bit more, uh, I would like to say friction or like abrasiveness than a metal magazine does. So it should be more resilient to uh, moving, but or falling out of cells. But here, I'm just gonna give it a little shake. Okay, and it slides right out. I'm gonna choose a different cell now. And I do not store magazines in elastic. I don't care what kind of pouch it is. I don't store magazines in elastic pouches because it'll stretch them. Here, we have a Lancer L5 Advanced Warfighter magazine. So with two and like a half shakes, it fell out. <laughs> now I'm gonna do the front cell. Got a Stanag style magazine. This is a Durham Mag uh, aluminum. Yeah, this is my only aluminum one that is silver. So it's even lighter than your standard steel magazine. And look at that. These just do not hold it. And just for shits and giggles, I'll do the MFT magazine. Yeah, I know people talk mad shit about these, but for a $6 magazine, it's really good for training, okay? So give it a shake. That one has held in the best so far because it's also got ribs on the front, but so does the Lancer. So take that for what you will. Uh, with that being said, you might say, well, with that Cumberbund, why don't you use some shock tubes to use as keepers? Well, there's no way to do that, at least not intuitively. So rather than settling with this Cumberbund, uh, I just wouldn't get it. They have other ones. I believe they have one called a Loki and a Thor. Those would be a better option, but even better, I would say just don't get this plate carrier uh, at this time. Sadly, I would like to be able to give a positive review on it, but it's just there's other stuff out there right now in the same price bracket that's better. My last thing with this Cumberbund, I do understand what they were doing and I like the thought, but it's a little too bulky for my liking. So. On the front of the cummerbund, uh, a lot of companies are going to this material called Tigris, and it's a very rigid material. It looks almost like carbon fiber, and it's it's uh, NIR compliant, and it's very rigid. It provides stability and also a good good uh, rigid structure to pull from if if you need to manipulate some sort of hardware or nylon, and it's a good place to pull from. Well, this doesn't have Tigris in it, which isn't the problem. It's got some harder plastic and it would sit, say if you have a placard on, it would sit underneath your placard. So if you ever want to remove your counterburn, you would just grab these little tabs here and just pull away, which is a nice thought uh, in concept, but there's no, uh, excuse me, there's no Velcro on the tabs themselves. Let me get a little bit closer. There's no Velcro on there. So whenever you have it on the front of your plate bag, May as well just show you guys. It just rests on top, and this part's totally free. It just it just hangs. It doesn't stick because there's no Velcro to stick. So if you start stacking stuff on top of it, this is thicker right here. And hopefully, if you have your plate carrier sized correctly, they should integrate like that. So it should be fairly flat, but it is still thicker material there. And your placard will stick to this but there's no adhesion going on in the very center, which is where majority of your weight's gonna be centered, right? So I don't like that idea. Uh, I think the cummerbund was poorly designed and I think the cummerbund integration system was poorly designed. So that really sucks. And uh, it's a fat L in my book. So there is that. Now the rest of this plate carrier is laser cut. I don't have a problem with anything that is laser cut on here. Matter of fact, it's actually, I like the design of it. So they have the laser cuts, of course, excuse me, but in the corner of the laser cuts, they have little bitty circles. So if you ever mount something to your plate carrier using shock tube, it'll actually go into the corner and it'll sit there really nicely and it won't be moving around in the channel as much. So I actually like that they did that. Uh, cattail antennas, I would imagine if you put it in there, it would stay put a lot easier as well. So I do like that. Now these buckles here, I forgot what they're called. Don't get me lying, but you can buy these from like uh, hardware uh, dealers. You can get them from them. 
but I got these direct from Raptor Tactical and I paid a lot more than what I should have. It was $15 for these and two little weird sewn pieces that are, are useless for this carrier at least. Uh, didn't need them and I don't know what they're even for, but uh, these add a lot of functionality and usability to this system. And also it appears I don't have a, a G-hook system currently on hand, but it appears as though G-hooks would go in here just fine. And for whatever reason, you can lift up this strap here and access all this from the underside. So maybe that's to help with G-hook setup. I don't know, but it, I don't know why you can get into that. So if anybody knows, put it in the comments. Uh, man, what else? There's no admin pouch. So for me, I, I've never been a real big admin fan. Uh, tucked away in your plate bag, I'd rather just add it if I need it. So there's that. Uh, I will give them this. So besides the laser cut area, how I like they did that. I also like how they integrated the front and rear plate bag. So the rear plate bag sits on top of the front plate bag. Uh, I'm sorry, it sits underneath, I misspoke. So it, whenever it's pulling, right, your rear plate bag is supposed to sit a little bit higher than your front because your front needs to cover uh, from about, uh, what's it called, your thoracic, thoracic region. I don't know why I said that. But with this, the way it's designed, it actually integrates really well and it does sit properly. So I do like that. And also on the rear plate bag, you do have a loop if you want to put Velcro stuff on there for that size. It, I mean, you pretty much use it for for uh, pouches or excuse me patches. But it also does have an integrated drag handle. Now this drag handle does feel robust and it's. It feels heavy duty, but uh, I see something that just sort of makes me go, why, why, why? So they did a really good stitching on the drag handle itself, on the top and bottom on each side of these tabs, but they left like a, a pass through almost on the side of the drag handles. So as you can see right here, and this tag came with it, I don't know what that's for, but they stitched the top and the bottom of each side, but they didn't do the side. And that's one more area. They can get a lot more rigidity in. I mean, I could fit my finger in there. So I think that's something that they should have done. I know you're not supposed to really rely on drag handles like that that much, but why put it there if it's not gonna be done like super stout, you know? That's just one extra step that would have made that super, super rigid and robust. Perhaps, uh, it would pull out and actually rip off the back laminate. I don't know. To me, it just makes more sense to have done it like that though. They also have some extra laser cuts up here going towards the shoulders. I also like that because if you have cattail antennas, you can route them through there or just antennas in general. I'm sure it would work great. I don't have that on hand to test though. Uh, last thing, I've got these shoulder pads. These shoulder pads are really bulky for what they are. Uh, these are Raptor Tactical as well. I do like they included the one wrap, although I think it's kind of redundant. Uh, but this is something I have against a lot of companies that do this. Why have a trifold design that you can route stuff through and then turn around and have one wrap on the side? To me, it doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, if you don't have a trifold design and it's more like a sock that goes over, like Ferro Concepts is a little padded shoulder sock, whatever they call it. If it had that on the side, that makes sense to me. But then again, you can always just route your stuff through it. So to me, it, it's just a little funky to even bother having one wrap on them to begin with. And then on the inside, you've got like a 3M mesh padding, but it's not like your standard mesh. It's it's like a a soft fabric. Uh, it's just it's really really padded, and it's gonna soak up a lot of moisture and then. This camouflage, you could imagine what kind of, what kind of environment it would be getting used in. And, you know, that's probably a fault of my own. You know, I, I wanted shoulder pads for this. I didn't know they were going to be this padded and bulky. And if you're wearing this camo, especially on your plate carrier too, and not just like some over white pants or something, uh, that's a lot of bulk. And you're not going to need super big 
shoulder pads like that. I, I just like having shoulder pads to cover up where the two bags adhere to each other. That way nothing's gonna pull away at them, you know? And uh, what's nice is that, like I said, the, the front plate bag goes over the rear plate bag, uh, how they integrate into each other. So if you were to run into anything, it's not gonna pull up on it and make it separate. And also the rear plate bag will ride higher. And all in all, that's good. I do like that. I do like the laser cut stuff in here. I do like how you can use both uh, quasim buckles and G-hooks, it appears. I haven't I haven't tested the G-hook thing. Uh, it is for medium sappies and 10 by 12s will both fit in here. I mean, that's, that's fine. That's the size of plate carrier I got. That's exactly what I would have expected. Just all in all though, I mean, my biggest thing is the cummerbund. Like, Raptor, please fix the cummerbund deal, my guy. The, just the, the, the company in general, please take a look at that. They got some awesome looking pouches. I will say one thing that's a little weird to me is all the all the chem light holders they have on every single pouch. That to me, that's like a little gimmicky. But I like some of their pouches. They got some really cool designs. They got a lot of like saw gunner pouches and stuff. And uh, also one that's all about like some sort of helicopter tape or whatever. I'm I'm not in the military, so I don't have a use for it. I don't know too much about it, but they come out with some pretty cool designs. But man, did they really drop the ball on this plate carrier. I'm just, it, I'm sort of baffled by, by how, how expensive this is for, for what you're getting, what I can get elsewhere for the same price. This, I would pass on it every day of the week. Uh, feral concepts, dynamic principles, defense mechanisms, all their cummerbunds mount with Velcro. If they would have done that with this, I mean, that would have been fine. But it just it just passes through and it doesn't mount to anything. Now, if you want, you can mount stuff on the exterior, but it sort of gets rid of the point of the whole pocket. And there's not Velcro inside the pocket, so it won't adhere to itself. So you're just going to have a cummerbund hanging off the back plate bag with a giant cavity because you're pulling on the cummerbund by it being on the exterior. So it just, oh man, I want to like it. I really do. But this to me was just a waste. Uh, and for you guys who want to see, yeah, here's, here's a uh, Spiritus Mark V with HSGI triple shingle on the front. And I will be doing a video on this soon and uh, talking about this setup, why I do or don't like it. Stay tuned to find out which it is. But uh, I'm not going to do it. You can remove this Velcro panel, though. That's just covering it, so it's it's not going to stick to anything. But you would fold it down, and it would stick to the Velcro. And it's actually the perfect right height. So that is nice. But, I mean, that's also what it was designed to do. And, I mean, that's, that's perfectly fine. What sucks is I had to buy the adapters for it. But it's not the end of the world, right? I just, man... Raptor Tactical, please, if you ever make a Mark III, which I suggest you should, I mean, I, I'd be more than happy to try again, but just please fix the cummerbund deal. This, I, I, it's, it's hardly even usable, especially with what's coming out now. I, I would much prefer something with a cummerbund that mounts to the plate bag. So, guys, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put whatever your question is in the comment. If you want to add something, go ahead. I've thought about many different ways to do a cummerbund in this setup, but because there's no way to mount it to the interior of the plate bag, and there's no way to mount the plate bag in on itself to where there's not a giant cavity there, I don't know what you could really do to make this usable. I know VXV and Shock Concepts have adapters, but that wouldn't help in this scenario. So guys, go ahead, uh, like and comment, share. Uh, Go ahead and stick around. I got a lot more videos planned and I'll be going over a bunch of different companies, kits and, and plate carriers and pouches and stuff. So uh, thanks for sticking around and watching guys and hope you all have a good one.